So here's my latest uh, processing project. Um, here's the code. I used uh, Proclipsing for this one. Uh, so these are my three classes. And I'll just run it here. It's uh, basically a fractal kind of uh, fractal generator. Um, and uh, I'm using the keyboard to change the size of these the nodes and location and rotation. So um, I'm changing the size and rotation of this green one right now. And, uh, and then this is just it with uh, meshes stretched out over the top. And so I'll change the size of the other one, rotation. So you can see that it, the fractal kind of nature of it already. And uh, so you can see that it's also, right now it's still flat, even though it has like this shell on it to, uh, to make it three dimensional and just rotate it around in a different axis. axis. So you can see rotating around that way. And then if I want to rotate it in a different direction, it just uh, just remakes it. Change the location, west, store. You can see that it gets uh, pretty complicated pretty easily. So uh, basically how I set up the coding part of it is I have uh, the Fractal 3D and basically this just makes an instance of the Fractal and then this also uh, controls the nodes so when I was putting in the keys uh, to rotate a node around um, that's just it's just doing that you know if key U is pressed then F leg R leg move up and um, so I can switch between the legs uh, and the F is just the the particular instance of the class fractal I have it made up here so F equals new fractal this you have to pass in uh, this whole thing when you're using pro proclipsing uh, the two is the number of legs um, I don't have it set up right now where I can have more than two legs, um, but you know, just in case I want to do that later. Um, and then eight is the depth. So uh, yes, so it just does this the iteration, eight iterations, all the way down, and uh, then uh, inside the fractal, this is where the recursion. Um, method is, yeah, here it is, iterate, node, this node, in, and then D is the depth, so the first time I pass it in, it's 8, and then it goes down to, you know, it has to be greater than 0, if it's 0, then it stops, um, yeah, so here it is, uh, iterate, and then iterate calls, iterate, next node, depth, and you can see that I, um, yeah, so I subtract 1 off of depth, and then put it in, and then I also put in the next node. Uh, so the node um, are is basically uh, I have a different class for nodes, and um, I'll show you. Here. 
so each of these white you know nodes is a node so so inside that class I just have basic you know uh, no, I've got location, uh, main vector, fin, uh, fin to main, um, and just kind of basically rotate by x, update fin, uh, move north, south, east, west, up. So that's basically. Um, program you can make a, a lot of uh, pretty interesting uh, fractals with this uh, just I just play around and then uh, yeah, can come up with some neat shapes and uh, And then if you find one that you like, uh, this one's just kind of a basic, basic form. Um, but then I also have it set up so you can uh, export it, and uh, I'll first press another key, and then you can see here in the console if it's written. Then it, yeah, so it uh, it writes. Uh, I think it's an STL uh, object. Um, yeah, save as STL, and it writes it into uh, uh, just a little a bin. So if I want to go into Rhinoceros or uh, oh, you can do it with Blender, or basically anything that reads STL. Um, so uh, import. Yeah, so I have it with a timestamp. So today is the eighth, and. Uh, Let's see if this one is that one or if it's the one, the earlier one that I did. Yeah, that's the one I did earlier. But anyway, so you can just kind of do whatever you can do and. Uh, rhinoceros, and I haven't explored rhinoceros very much uh, yet. Yeah, I'm just changing the rendering of it. So that's uh, basically my latest project.